Okay, let's move forward with uh, this simple concept of uh, circulation cells that we looked at, starting with the heating radiator and then a larger spatial scale on Earth, right? Warm air, low pressure, uh, rising air, uh, hitting the ceiling, diverging, sinking, low temperatures, high pressure, diverging and converging towards the warm air. So how would we want to understand it? Let's simplify again for, uh, to understand the concept. Let's assume that Earth is just standing straight in the middle and the sun is going around. Earth is not rotating. What happens? Different parts of the Earth get heated as the sun's rays fall on it. So you end up creating warmer air at the lower latitudes because sun's rays are still parallel, more energy per unit area still falling on uh, in the tropics, excess energy and energy loss at higher latitudes, which means as you see in this figure, you're going to create warm air, low pressure, rising air. Let's not worry about uh, evaporation, etc. right now. That rising air, shown in this red uh, arrows, is going to hit the tropopause, and it's going to move towards the polar latitudes. We are again imagining first a zonal mean meridional section for the cells shown on the side, right? So the surface area is shown here, but on the side we have these cells forming in a zonal mean meridional sense. So the warm red arrows are moving towards the poles, right? We have no rotation on Earth, so let's say they can just move straight towards lower temperatures and the poles. They are losing heat along the way, mixing with the cold atmosphere and getting colder, colder, and they make it all the way to the North Pole, and they hit the end of the row, got cold enough, and they sink. So you have cold temperature, sinking air, high pressure at the poles. High pressure is going to push the air out towards lower pressures, so you can see the blue arrow sinking to the surface, moving towards lower latitudes. As they move towards lower latitudes, they are beginning to warm up again, and the converging air into the tropics has warmed, and it's going to rise again. Already you can see some contradictory things here, right? Tropics are the warmest regions, and yet you are moving warmer air towards the tropics. Why? Because you are rising the air, and you need to fill it with air from somewhere else, so that's going to come in from the polar latitudes. Later on we will see that as we open and look at the flow or the sphere, things are a bit more complicated because you can also have flow coming in from the longitudinal directions. When you make the longitudinal mean zonal section, zonal average for a meridional section, you have averaged the flow in the zonal direction and you're only going to look at flow in the meridional direction or the north-south direction from the tropics to the poles, right? So then what's happening when on the sphere? On the pole you have sinking air, cold temperatures, high pressures. That air is going to flow out towards the lower latitudes everywhere on the sphere in both hemispheres. Very simplified situation again. Remember, Earth is just standing still, not rotating, and the sun is going around, heating and cooling, heating in the lower latitudes and losing energy at higher latitudes. Okay? So, the air along the way is getting warmed up, and the warm air is coming right onto the equator and rising again. So, you have this one large convection cell. What's missing here? I think you can already imagine what's missing, right? The fact is that Earth is rotating, that's the main thing, and Earth is going around the Sun, that's the second thing. The more complicated situation is that Earth is not standing up straight to the plane of the ecliptic, but it's actually tilted, so you're going to have seasons as well, which means you are receiving more energy in one season or six months of the year than in the other six months of the year. We have to add all those complications. But nonetheless, in this short podcast, just remember how the circulation cells actually can get set up because of the differential heating of the Earth's surface. This 
is critical because there is an equator to pole temperature gradient being set up which is what is critical for this circulation for weather for climate for oceans motion and so on for creating rainfall deserts forests everything why is that important also in the global warming because global warming then is probably affecting the equator to pole temperature gradient which means it's probably affecting the amount of energy that needs to be moved from the poles to the higher latitudes and all that again works through changes in circulation cells and so on and the amount of rain number of hurricanes etc so again simple concept but it is being linked all the way to global warming i'll always try to keep mentioning global warming because that's kind of what is going to be dominating everything you will probably end up learning in some way or the other so you always have to understand how fundamental processes end up finally being a player in global warming and the energy balance under global warming so let's do that in the next slide